Four radical leftists going to protest a war on Ukraine. A red fist swallowed one, and then there were three. Many of you have probably stumbled upon this very nice-looking independent radical grassroots media red fist on Twitter, TikTok, or on other social media sites. Who knows? Some of you might even have shared some of their very well-made videos and posts. I know I have. And what's there not to like? It looks good. It looks fantastic. It tackles issues like racial discrimination, trans rights, and Palestinian struggle, to name a few. And there's even a healthy amount of riot porn now and then. And did I mention it looks good? On their website, they tell that Redfish is a multi-award winning digital content creator, which specializes in producing short and in-depth documentaries in collaboration with people involved in grassroots struggles worldwide to build an alternative to the ruling capitalistic system. I'm already liking it. They say that they cover the facts as they stand, but are not neutral or sit on the fence in the face of injustice, and neither should they. Sounds just perfect, doesn't it? Now where do I sign up? Just the one small problem. Redfish is not grassroots, it is not independent, and it is not really radical. It is, in fact, a Russian state-affiliated media operation that has a very specific target group and some quite sinister aims. And that target group is, well, it's actually me. And probably also you, since you, for some reason, found this video. Speaking of which, who the hell am I? Well, I'm pleased to introduce myself. My name is Dimitri. I'm a social anthropologist and activist based in Finland, a country in northern eastern Europe. I'm interested in issues like climate change, resilience, social justice, building horizontal power structures, etc. And this is my new channel from Dimitri with love. And it's meant for my English-speaking audience, which doesn't actually exist, nor do I know if it ever will. So it's basically up to you, really. Like, subscribe, and share if you find this content interesting, and I know to make more of it. Back to the topic, which is, as the title says, what makes left weak. And I'm specifically interested in what makes us weak in the realm of information warfare and modern social media indoctrination and propaganda. And I do think that using Redfish as a case study gives us some legitimate answers and might even help us grow resilience against attempts to affect our thinking. First, some background. Why do I think that Redfish is in fact a Russian state-affiliated media? Do I have any proof? It's not just that Twitter actually informs you of this connection. And I know some people of you take these American social media claims with a grain of salt, as you maybe should. It has been well documented, however, years before the Russian invasion, that this is in fact the case. Daily Beast was first to point out that the in-house reporters and producers of Redfish had previously worked on Russian government-owned media outlets like Russia Today, Sputnik, and Rutli. Redfish documentarist Marcel Cartier, who has made a dozen documentaries for the Redfish media outlet, had years of work history in Russia Today and Sputnik. Yelena Milinsik was Spanish language correspondent for Russia Today in East Aleppo. And here is actually a picture of this grassroots media contributor sitting in the table with none other than Putin himself. And there are others. William Whiteman, a reporter at Redfish, is a former Russia Today employee. Rania Kalek, an American journalist, while not a Russia Today employee, still was a frequent face 
as a commentator in both Russia Today and Sputnik. So I think we got this covered, right? Let's move forward. First, I want to ask, are the news in Red Fields true? Or should we regard it as a fake news site? The thing is, they are not factually untrue. Little black and white, maybe, but that's not really the problem. We really need to think what's the aim of media operation like Redfish to understand its modus operandi and at the same time the modus operandi of modern social media indoctrination and propaganda that is aimed at leftist people. If we look at their Twitter feed and only concentrate on tweets regarding Russian attack on Ukraine, we'll start to see a pattern. Redfish is not trying to convince leftist audience to support Russian innovation, as this would only attract tankies, and we know that tankies already support Russian invasion in Ukraine. On top of that, it would alienate broader leftist audience, and they don't want that. The real goal is twofold. First, Redfish aims to trivialize the whole conflict as something that happens all the time and all around the world, and the only reason Russian invasion dictates the headlines of mainstream media is that it's happening in so-called Western country and not in somewhere else. It's okay for them if you condemn Russian invasion as long as you condemn all the wars everywhere. Take for example this pic that was posted just hours after Russian invasion began. Don't let the mainstream media's Eurocentrism dictate your moral support for victims of war and condemn war everywhere. It's clever, it's not factually wrong, although they did forget to mention that Russia actually contributed significantly to the bombings in Syria. And it actually worked. 12,000 likes and hundreds of shares. So instead of clearly taking a stand, and condemning Russian invasion of, on a sovereign state, we are offered maybe more safe position of condemning war everywhere. And I'm sorry, but rhetorically, this does remind me of people who couldn't say black lives matter, but insisted that all lives matter. The second goal is to blur the nature of the invasion. The fact is that Russia invaded a sovereign country and the Russian leadership has been quite open that, that in their view Ukraine is not a real country, but more like a colony that used to belong to the Russian Empire. And in lack of better word, I'd call this kind of politics Empiralism, empiralism. However, what Red Fist does is that they try to portray this as a class of USA and Russia, or NATO and Russia. And this is very effective tactic for people who don't live next to Russia. It basically strips Eastern European countries of their agency and portrays them as NATO puppets that don't have agenda of their own. And this is what has sometimes been called West planning. So why blur the nature of the conflict? Because when we get this idea that not everything we see is true, and it's really USA working behind the scenes, suddenly all support towards Ukraine becomes support for NATO and the sinister goals of USA orchestrated by CIA. They don't want you to say more than neither with Putin nor with NATO. And they want you to be very careful siding with Ukraine, as you might in fact be siding with CIA and Azov Nazis and whatnot. And they count on that, that even if we are not sure if this is the case actually, it's safer for us as leftists to maintain a healthy distance to Ukrainian struggles. And also, we leftist people like to sound clever. And what sounds more clever than chipping in the conversation with, well, actually, it's not purely Russia that is the aggressor here. And Red Fist Media does its best to reinforce the idea that siding with Ukraine 
is dubious at best. If you look for it, it is quite clear. There are many news about Azov Nazis, about racism that non-white refugees from Ukraine have faced as they fled the country, about Ukrainian bomb in Russian-controlled Donetsk, about covert CIA operations in multiple countries across history, about European demonstrations against NATO, about attacks against Russian business owners and Orthodox Jews in Europe, and other Russophobic sentiments. And while these are not fake news, and racism and ace of Nazis are a legitimate concern that we really need to address, what is interesting that there is no single tweet that clearly condemns Russian invasion, at least without mentioning NATO as an equal bad. There is no single pic, video, anything else that shows atrocities of invading Russian army. There are, in fact, some mentions of anti-war protests in Russia. But somehow these reporters, who have video footage from all over the world in their news, and who have had extensive work history in Russia today and other Russia state medias, couldn't get a single video of Russian police arresting protesters. Wonder why. Take, for example, this tweet. Tens of thousands of red Belgrade fans making these wonderful TIFOs that condemn war everywhere and collectively stand behind messages of peace. It really makes me want to share this tweet. Only thing that they forgot to mention is that this support group in question is Delize, that is infamous Serbian ultranationalist group that formed Arkans Tigers, a Serbian volunteer group that fought in Croatia and Bosnia in Yugoslavian wars and took directly part in the atrocities, genocidal acts, massacres, rapes, and tortures against Bosniaks. But in that post, there was really no disinformation. Just a little fact that they left out to make it more easily approachable and shareable. They also have many tweets about censorship of their media in Western countries. And if you look at this picture, it is the NATO that's enforcing this censorship. But across their media, is there a single mention that since the attack began, Russian Duma passed a law that makes 15 years of prison sentences possible for merely calling Russian attack a war. No, of course not. Also, it could be worth mentioning that since the war began, Russia has actually banned all the social media sites that are pictured in this cartoon for not giving platform to Russian propaganda. So, the way modern Russian propaganda works and the way the modern propaganda in social media works is not just blunt, one-sided, one-way propaganda. They don't just make an official Russian propaganda channel and expect you to come to read it and just agree. They want to make content that is shared by you and me. It's not about getting people to support Russian invasion, but to make them suspicious of supporting Ukraine. It's about fanning flames around issues that are real, but that contribute to Russian aims at the moment, and being dead silent where it doesn't. It's about making engaging content that makes you emotionally invested and is easily shareable. It's about making you the person who sometimes shares their propaganda, because people trust you and your discretion. And why do I think it's important to talk about Red Fist? Because it shows us something about modern propaganda and indoctrination that we can easily spot in the right-wing or anti-waxing media outlets, but that we struggle to see when it's aimed at us. I just recently had a conversation where I told a person that Red Fist Media they share is Russian state affiliated, and they answered that they know it, but it's good content nevertheless. I pressured them 
that don't they think that it's problematic, but they were like, all media is owned and sponsored by billionaires, etc. So if they shouldn't share this media, why should they share other media? And it's very easy to share their tweets. Like I said in the beginning, I have done that, and then someone told me what's the case actually, and then I stopped it, of course. And this kind of mindset is exactly the broader aim of these kind of medias. We have seen it happen to audiences of similar right-wing and anti-vaccine medias. If we adopt this cynical worldview, where all medias are just equally bad and cannot be trusted at all, we step into a realm where we are somewhat indifferent to truth. And we like to think that this is being critical towards media, but it is not. Medias are biased, yes, but some medias are more biased than others. And there are so many journalists working in mainstream medias that are legitimately aiming to produce objective news coverage, even though for many reasons they sometimes fail. And I don't say we shouldn't criticize media, of course we should, but we should do it when we have basis for criticism. And then on the other hand, a media like Redfish is not trying to do what it says, but it's really a media operation, Maskerovka, that exists for political reasons that should not be supported. And when we share even their legitimate tweets, we give our own approval to the legitimacy of their content as whole. And I'm not saying that we should be contempt with mainstream media. I don't believe that it can show us the way out of capitalism. We need to strengthen and support our own media projects and learn to push our own ideas, analysis, agendas, utopias and everything else. But Redfish is not our media. And I still find that even mainstream media is much better than Kremlin-operated fake leftist media posing as an independent grassroots project. Oh yeah, and speaking of which, I do have Patreon, which is currently only in Finnish, but if someone for some reason found this information worth of supporting it financially and wants to corrupt me and see some behind the scenes content, there is a link in description. I'm also interested in your opinions. What did you think about what I just said? And feel free to disagree with me. And also because this was actually my first video in English, and if you understood my pronunciation, I'm very interested to hear if you're looking for more content like this. And anyways, thank you for watching. Bye.